<clears throat> Hi, my name is Brianna Cisneros, and this is for Kinesiology 4310 Measurement Techniques. And the assessment that I chose is Air Displacement Plasmography. So the history of air displacement plasmography is it's an assessment that the first principles were applied to the measurement of body volume and composition in plasmography and was first conducted in the early 1900s by Fris Hansen. So Fris Hansen first used infant pl plasmography and used a catheter that was then inserted into the infant's nose all the way down to the stomach to achieve a direct connection between the air inside the infant and the air surroundings. Because this was early on in the, in the 1900s, the results were not as reliable and had really inconsistent results. And it wasn't until the 1960s that results were relatively stable. Um, due to this, the 1960s, there wasn't a lot of technological advancements. So there was a lot of technical errors such as trying to maintain the best ambient con conditions was still a relatively big problem. In the 1980s, um, the study was further advanced because of the advancements in technology. And then in 1995, the first experimental air displacement plasmography was developed for adults. So later in 2000, two years later, there was a development for children that followed. Measuring body composition. So air displacement plasmography is a form of health-related fitness assessment, and it uses the body composition to measure body density and the volume of an individual using Boyle's Law. So Boyle's Law states that the initial pressure is equal to the final pressure and the initial volume is equal to the final volume. Most commonly used is the bod pod. The bod pod is a body composition system and it's an accurate way to measure the body composition and is more accurate than the hydrostatic underwater weighing. It's considered to have a greater feasibility than hydrostatic underwater weighing because it's easier to administer. It takes less practice to administer the test unlike hydrostatic underwater weighing. And it is way less expensive than hydrostatic underwater weighing. By using the bod pod body composition system, the body volume is indirectly calculated by subtracting the volume of air remaining in the chamber while the subject is inside from the volume of air in an empty chamber. So using this difference, body composition is found using the subject's mass, volume, and surface area and the relationship between density and percent fat mass. So density is the subject mass over the subject volume that gives you the density. And the bod pod body composition system uses its own system of equation known as the series equation. The series equation is stated as 4.95 over the density minus 4.5 times 100 to calculate the percent fat mass. So in this next picture, we have a picture of the bod pod system. So this kind of looks similar to like a spaceship capsule. So you're able to see out and in, and it has a single hinge door to open and close. Once you close the door, the air compresses and the volume and pressure changes are calculated. You have the data analysis computer, which um, is used to input data such as gender, weight, height, and it does its calculations on its own to calculate the percent fat mass. A scale is also used in order to calculate the weight in kilograms, and a stadiometer height is used to measure to the nearest centimeter height of the subject. Reliability and validity of air displacement plasmography. So the range of error for bod pod body composition assessment testing is ranged between plus or minus one to 2.7%. So this is a really low error um, for a test and it's considered really good. 
the air di displacement plasmography has a high reliability correlation of 0.89 and uh, SEE of 0 0.008. It has a slightly high p-value using the 0 0.05 which results in a 2.8% fat difference and a standard deviation of 2.3%. The air displacement plasmography may yield a higher body density by 2.8%, but still a low individual error. So what this means is that there could be an error either in an overestimation by 2.8%. So for example, let's say your percent fat mass is 25%. So the test can cause it to be 2.8% above that. So if you're 25%, the test could calculate it as 27.8%. The reliability, it's a high reliability correlation of R is equal to 0.89, but other external errors such as the clothing could affect the reliability the reliability of the testing and cause it to be a little lower. So in conclusion, the bod pod testing has been shown to be both reliable and valid. Instruments used. So for bod pod testing, of course you need the bod pod. The bod pod is a chamber that is used and consists of a single fiberglass structure that is divided into two chambers. The first is the front test chamber and the second chamber is the rear reference chamber. Those are separated by a fiberglass seat. So between the chambers, there's a volume protruding element called diaphragm that, uh, that oscillates under computer control. This yields a complementary volume perturbations between the two chambers and based on Boyle's law, the pressure fluctuates that occur as a result of the volume changes and those are used to determine the change of air volume. The chamber air volume is determined both with and without the subject seated in the test chamber with the difference between the two measures yielding the body volume. So the bot pod of course comes with its own system of calculations using the series equation. So this is a calculation system used to find the percent fat mass it also comes with a data analysis computer, um, and it's basically a database that you use to input the basic information such as the gender, male or female, the height to the nearest centimeter, the weight in kilograms, and the ethnicity. Uh, it's very important to put the correct ethnicity uh, due to the regions and different ethnicities. It can cause an over or underestimation in percent fat mass. So for example, um, the white versus the African-American counterparts may have a difference in percent fat mass as African-Americans have more fat mass than a white individual based on ethnicity. So the date of birth, this is also used to log the individual and keep record using the age and date of birth. The system self-calculates and calibrates the volume inside the chamber before the individual enters and calibrates the volume after the individual is inside. A scale and height satiometer is used before entering the bod pod to weigh the individual to the nearest kilogram and to take the exact height to the nearest centimeter. An ADP machine is used and it's used to measure the thoracic gas volume. Um, and that is the thoracic volume of an individual using the maximum tidal volume. Testing procedures. So before a test is conducted, it is best for the individual not to have exercised or consumed food three to four hours before testing. And upon arrival, subjects are asked to void the bladder or go to the restroom to prevent an additional body volume that's recorded. So clothes must also be of light weight using a swimsuit or spandex shorts, and for women, a non-padded sports bra. A tight-fitted latex swim or cycling cap is also used to keep hair underneath the cap and protect the ears from the pressure inside the chamber. So, of course, hair has a form of density and volume, so that can affect the volume of the individual that's recorded. 
Before entering the bod pod, subjects are asked to stand in front of a statometer to record the height to the nearest 0.1 centimeter and are then asked to step on a scale to calculate weight in kilograms. This, of course, is done with the minimum uh, clothing to calculate the correct weight. And again, the ADP machine is used to calculate the thoracic gas volume. So this is measured by the individual or the subject breathing into a tube that's connected directly to the ADP. This calculates, again, the maximum tidal volume. Testing procedures. So what should you expect? So inside a bod pod, you should sit comfortably and quietly, no laughing or talking, and relax and breathe normally, and the bod pod does the rest. The sounds are kind of like you're in an airplane or an elevator. Um, all you're going to be hearing is just the valves opening and closing, but some people are kind of unaware of the sounds. Um, in order to have the best results possible, again, you need to follow these instructions, such as no food or drinks or exercise at least three hours prior to the testing. You should use the restroom before testing. Uh, do not apply any lotions or skin creams prior to your test. Make sure to remove glasses and jewelry. Wear minimum form-fitting clothing and for men, spandex-type swimsuits or compression bike shorts. For women, some spandex or swimsuit or bicycle shorts and a non-padded sports bra. Due to the nature of the test, it is sensitive in nature, so the you should schedule a visit and a assessment using the equipment based under the same conditions such as the exact time of day, the hydration levels of the individual, the amount of facial and body hair, the same day of uh, menstrual cycle for women, and of course make sure Air displacement plethysmography is a technique used to determine human body composition. Developed into a viable system in the mid-1990s, plethysmography refers to the measurement of size and in this case volume. It is a tool used by doctors, nurses, nutritionists, and athletic trainers to help patients assess their overall health and efficacy of their exercise programs. The only commercial available product that uses this technique is called the Bod Pod, made by Cosmed and previously Life Measurement Instruments. This device has two chambers, one for the patient to sit in and another in the back that is not visible for reference pressures. Physiologically, this technology measures percent lean versus fat by measuring human body volume. This machine uses a densitometric technique that uses air displacement and pre-recorded patient mass to determine body density by solving the equation density equals mass over volume. Mass is determined using a highly accurate scale. Body volume is determined in a five minute test when the subject sits inside a chamber and displaces a certain amount of air equal to his or her body volume. The volume of air inside the chamber is calculated by altering the size of the chamber via a diaphragm in the wall between the two chambers and applying relevant physical gas laws to determine the total volume from the changing air pressure within the chamber as its size is altered. By manipulating the pressure with a known initial volume at a constant temperature, Boyle's law can be used to determine the final volume. This law states that the initial pressure multiplied by the initial volume is equal to the final pressure multiplied by the final volume. This means that if volume increases, pressure will decrease, and if volume decreases, pressure will increase. Subtracting the final volume or volume with the person in the chamber from the initial volume of the empty chamber, the volume of air displaced can be found, and with this, the individual's body volume. Once body volume is determined, body density can be calculated and inserted into an equation to provide percent fat measurements.
considering fat and non-fat have different densities, percentage of body fat versus non-fat can be determined. The non-fat components include minerals, protein, and water. In order to complete the calculations, assumptions that fat-free components are the same as the reference standards must be made. Before starting the test, calibrations must be performed. First, the chamber is measured while empty, and then with a 50-liter calibration cylinder inside. Two measurements are also done while the patient is inside in order to assure accuracy. If these measurements do not agree, a third measurement may be taken. Patients are asked to wear tight-fitting clothing or swimsuits as well as swim caps over their hair in order to minimize air getting trapped. In order to correct for patient's normal breathing, thoracic gas volume is determined by having the patient breathing into a tube and recording pressure changes. Thoracic gas volume is the average volume of air in the lungs during tidal breathing. This process allows for more accurate results. Compared to the previous gold standard of hydrostatic weighing, ADP uses similar engineering principles but with air rather than water. This is advantageous as it prevents the patient from getting wet, making it more user-friendly for younger patients and the elderly. The bod pod has a seat insert for children between the ages of 2 and 6. However, different software and calibration standards are required. The data remains accurate for children as small as 12 kilograms. The normal calibration works for weights up to 250 kilograms. Bioelectrical impedance is an electrical solution that also calculates body composition. This particular method measures flow of current between electrodes placed on the body to provide an estimate of body water present to calculate fat. It is advantageous as it is minimally invasive, but is not recommended for those with implanted devices as the electrical current can interfere with things like pacemakers and internal defibrillators. In addition, basic skin calipers are a more cost-effective way to determine body composition as they involve calculating lean body mass by simply measuring the skinful thickness of the layer of fat just under the skin. Skin calipers, however, lack the accuracy that the air displacement plasmography with the bod pod supplies due to human error and generalized equations. With that being said, ADP has a high level of accuracy, is easy to use, and has a relatively fast test time. However, it does have some limitations. The commercial bod pod unit is very expensive and ranges in price from $30,000 to $40,000, making it only available to certain facilities. In addition, the manufacturers indicate the general error range of the bod pod is 1 to 2 percent. In regards to patient-specific limitations, the subject should not have exercised for two hours before the test, as hydration status and increases in muscle temperature can adversely affect the results. Nevertheless, air displacement plasmography in the form of the bod pod is considered to be the current gold standard of body composition measurement. So next we have the errors in testing and advantages and disadvantages of the bod pod composition system testing. So some errors in testing include the improper clothing used during the testing, such as loose clothing or not wearing the minimum recommendation of clothing. Others include errors in bod pod calibration. So an error in or failing to calibrate the bod pod before use can lead to errors in results. Uh, failure to calibrate scales or the stadiometer before use could result in an under or overestimation in weight, in weight or height caused, causing an error in results. There could also be calibration errors of the ADP thoracic gas volume, so it's important to calibrate this before use. Uh, wearing jewelry or lotion slash creams during the test can also affect the errors in testing. So whenever you're going to be testing um, and being assessed using the bod pod, it's best not to take off all jewelry or not wear any at all, and not to wear or put on any lotions or creams. So some advantages of the bod pod composition testing 
for using air displacement plasmography is it has a high reliability and accuracy and it's highly valid uh, and it's also fast testing and easy to administer however there are some disadvantages such as inaccurate for diseases that may cause a high fat mass va value expensive equipment and expensive labor for the analysis slash equipment repairs So analysis results. The effect of isothermal air near the skin surface is estimated by calculating a surface area artifact, SAA. The SAA is automatically computed by the BonPod software as the K, which is the constant derived empirically by the manufacturer, liters per uh, centimeter squared, times the BSA, which is the body surface area, calculated from body weight and height, uh, which is used by centimeter squared to find the surface area artifact. The measured body volume is raw, otherwise known as body volume raw. It has not been corrected for, for VTGA and surface area artifact. This step is then repeated to check for agreement. If these body volume raw measurements are within a 0.2% or 150 milliliter range, whichever is larger, they are averaged out. If the first two body volume raw measurements do not meet this criteria, a third body volume raw determination is made and the two values that are closest and within the criteria for agreement are averaged. If ambient conditions are relatively stable and the subject is breathing quietly in a relaxed fashion, it is common for the two body volume raw measurements to agree within the predefined criteria. Body volume in the bod pod is calculated with the following formula. Body volume correlation in liters is equal to the body volume raw in liters times the surface area artifact in liters plus 40% of the VTGA in liters. Once body mass and body volume correlation are known, the principles of densiometry are applied. Body density is calculated as mass over the body volume correlation and body density is then inserted into a standard formula for estimating the percent body fat based on a two compartment 2C model such as the models of Siri, which the Bod pod body composition testing system includes the Siri equation. So now we have all of the references. This is just a general guide of all the references that were used in order to find the information for all of the history of this assessment. And that's it.